The Suez Canal is one of the most important naval passageways in the world. Despite being located in Egypt, for the first nine decades of its existence, it was owned and controlled by the British and the French. The anti-imperialist sentiment within the country culminated in the Egyptian Revolution of 1952, which saw the Arab Nationalist Free Officers Movement take power. Shortly after, the charismatic Jamal Abdel Nasser rose to the forefront to lead Egypt on a radically different trajectory than they had been under the deposed Muhammad Ali monarchy. In 1956, Nasser would make the most important decision of his career when he nationalized the foreign-owned Suez Canal. His power and the legacy he would subsequently carve out for himself all hung in the balance as the British and French colluded with Israel to bring him down. The Muhammad Ali dynasty that ruled Egypt since 1805 had a firm interest in embracing the modernizing drive that they saw in the Europeans. So when the Frenchman Ferdinand de Lesseps approached Said Pasha about building a canal that connected the Red Sea with the Mediterranean, the Egyptian ruler welcomed the idea. The construction of the Suez Canal was completed in 1869, with much of the funding coming from French investors, whilst Egypt was given a substantial share as well. When Ismail Pasha was unable to pay back loans he had taken out to fund his modernizing projects, he sold his country's 44% share in the canal to the British in 1875. This meant that despite being on Egyptian territory, the Suez Canal was owned and controlled by the French and British. Soon after, Egypt was colonized by the British, a situation that continued in some shape or another until the early 1950s. This is where Jamal Abdel Nasser comes in. As part of the Free Officers Movement, Nasser espoused Arab nationalist ideas that were assertive and antagonistic to imperialism. Upon assuming power, he had concentrated on improving the living standards of his citizens. So he embarked upon a wave of reforms that addressed land ownership, housing programs and medical provisions. Considering his ideological outlook, he found it unacceptable that the Suez Canal was not owned by Egypt. Already in 1954, Britain had signed a treaty with Egypt to withdraw all of its troops from the Suez Canal zone. But in 1956, Nasser made the move he likely envisioned from the beginning. On July 26th, in a speech in Alexandria, Nasser announced that the Suez Canal would be nationalized for Egypt's benefit. In the same speech, he had mentioned the name of Ferdinand de Lesseps several times. This was a pre-arranged code word for his forces to go in and take control of the canal. In addition to satisfying Egyptian concerns regarding sovereignty, the Suez's nationalization could provide the funds needed for his ambitious Aswan Dam project. Unfortunately for Nasser, the British and French refused to accept this. Nasser's action was to the detriment of their economic welfare, since the canal had become a vital conduit for the transport of Middle Eastern oil to Western Europe. Dejected by the lack of an American response to Nasser's nationalization, the British and French decided to go ahead and take matters into their own hands. But without American support for their plans, Britain and France were wary of seeming like the aggressors and subsequently alienating their most important ally. So the two European states colluded with Egypt's main foe in the Middle East, Israel. The Israelis had only been established less than a decade before and were on a constant war footing with Egypt. Nasser's Arab nationalism took an aggressive and adversarial position on the newborn nation-state. During his nationalization of the Suez, 
Nasser had closed the canal to Israeli ships and tried to block the Straits of Tehran and the Gulf of Aqaba, thereby choking Israeli maritime economic activity. The plan was for Israel to attack Egypt via the Sinai, at which point Britain and France would invade under the geese of trying to separate the two combatants. The war would last for nine days, from October 29th to November 7th. Although the Triple Alliance won every major military encounter, they were denounced by the international community for their aggression. Their main ally, America, was especially irritated, because at the same time, their Cold War rival Soviet Union was forcefully putting down the Hungarian uprising. Now the Americans would find it hard to denounce Soviet aggression when their own allies had acted in the same manner. Nasser had won a political victory that made him the champion of the Arabs. Nationalizing the Suez Canal would prove to be the defining achievement of his immense legacy. Thank you guys for watching, and a special thank you goes out to my Patreons for continuing to support me financially. If you want to do so, click the link in the end screen or in the description to this video, and I would appreciate it a lot. Whatever contribution you can make, that would be awesome. And if you're interested in the history of the modern Middle East, I'm making a playlist called Making of the Modern Middle East, so click the link in the end screen to check out all the other videos. I'm sure you'll enjoy at least some of them, if not all of them. Until next time, Peace.